When Nier Automata came out, I was perplexed because I, I had heard of Nier Gestalt and there was a lot of buzz around Nier Automata. And I remember seeing a trailer and I was like, wow, it's 2D, but there's also these 3D elements and I don't really understand what's going on, but these folks that are wearing these black uh, outfits and the white hair are extremely cool, literally. That was what I thought. And the more I watched trailers and gameplay, the more I was like, wow, this is like really cool. And I thought it would just be like one of these typical shooter, like, you know, old school asteroids, like just shoot everything. And as as I began to realize that there were like, well, however many endings, like 13, 14 endings, and then you have to like play through the game multiple times. Like I, I sort of realized that this was something that was different than every other game that had uh, really come before. And and I didn't know Yoko Taro at all. I didn't know that this man was a genius. I didn't know that, that essentially like he was just doing his own thing. And as a gamer, I was really excited about that because it's like, so often we get this cookie cutter gaming experience. And so when someone comes in and flips things on their side and you, you sort of are like, what? And uh, that's what this Nier Automata is to me. I played it so much and it was so good. And when I heard City Ruins from the soundtrack, I was, I was transfixed and I downloaded the theme for my PlayStation 4. It was like a machine in the forest with 2B looking at the machine. And it played City of Ruins on repeat. And I didn't realize, I didn't know what the chaos language was at the time. So I, I always thought that I was just not hearing the lyrics correctly. After like six months, I was like, wait, this is gibberish. I know it's not. It's a made up language. I understand. But it sounds like English, but it also sounds like uh, like a million other foreign languages all combined into one. And just blew me away. That became the theme. It was always on. I loved listening to it while I was cleaning, while I was just sitting there idle looking at my phone while on my PlayStation not doing anything. This theme is deeply sentimental to me because it it was some of the best years of my life. When I was an opera singer at opera school in, a, in Philadelphia, I was basically always listening to this theme when I turn on my PlayStation after a long, stressful day. Nier has some of the best music ever written. Keiji Okabe is phenomenal. Let's just listen to it. I love how it starts off with this gentle piano. And this, this sound, this like robotic sound, it's very, it's just, it's atmospheric. I love the guitar, the piano, this melody, the harp in the background, and then the soprano. And then you get this drum, and, and violins, and an orchestra, and then the soprano. What's funny about City Ruins is that there, there's a sense of peace. It just feels good. You know, some pieces that you just listen to and you could listen to all day. That's this kind of piece. Like it, it's, it's, uh, <laughs> it's not easy listening, but, but it's the type of thing where you can put it on and you don't feel like it's not asking of you to pay attention. It's not asking anything of you. It's not too intense. You could listen to it in the car. You could probably play it for your mom and she'd be like, oh, this sounds nice. You know what I mean? Like it's not, it's not the type of piece. It's not a divisive piece. Let's put it that way. The fact that he, that, that they use a harp, a guitar and a piano it's so peaceful and it just it just feels good you you listen to it and you're like yeah but then the drums pick up and it feels like you're on a quest 
I don't know, just it just helps to elevate the piece to a neck to a new level. Um, let's keep listening. You know, the drums make it feel important. Like it's not like just like, oh yes, we feel good. It's like, no, something is happening. Um, that's what I that's my takeaway from the drums. Also, sorry, do you hear how the soprano You notice the piano doesn't change? The piano has not changed. And you know what's interesting is that that melody is quite somber. There's a sense of, uh, well, city ruins. There's a sense that uh, of, of melancholy, but it, it, it persists. And, and throughout the entire song and throughout the entire piece, it, it is basically the same thing. That, that, that rhythm and that pattern and that, that those pitches are all the same throughout the piece, even though the soprano is doing something completely different. You hear it? Listen just to the piano. And then listen to the soprano. Those are syncing up in a, in a bizarre, beautiful way. And then the piano changes here. Oh. And then we shift back into this strophic pattern. You may have seen my Kanye video, but I was talking about strophic. And typically in, in sung music and in German leader, there's typically the, the, the piano accompaniment is all the same, but then there's lyrics over top that are different. In this case, everything repeats, but it's a very common thing to do to keep the accompaniment the same and have the melody change. Although in this, the melody doesn't change per se, but there is like a B section if the A is B section So and then it goes back to the original section, the A. So A B A. This is A B A. Like, why is that metallic music in there? Why is that? Why does that metallic noise in there? Is it to reference the Yora? Why does that machinery sound? Why is that there? Um, because it's the most like non-organic thing. It sounds like it's 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 added in post. It's it sounds like it's added. You know, it's not it's not a it's not an instrument. It's not a natural instrument. So like, why is it there?
again, this combo of guitar and harp is fascinating. Obviously the piano is the main, is the main, the hero of that trio. Also you hear that echo in the voice. I love the way it lilts. I also love that the soprano, there's a lot of sliding. You know, in, in music, we, we call that legato. There's a lot of, there's a lot of sliding around and then also scooping up and in a way, it's almost like a glissando, you know, when the piano goes, that's a glissando. It's kind of, it's kind of dirty. Like, in, 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 as a singer, you know, and she doesn't go, ah, which would be a very different thing. Then she goes, ah, and what does that do? There's a connection there. And so when we muddy and blur note shifts, not only are we keeping legato, but we're also highlighting emotion in a deeper way, uh, which is really cool. Another technique that I'm hearing is the spring goes pa pa she just go pa ting that's very bland and it's very boring and again it's the singer's job to accentuate emotion with the human voice so pa ting there's a place to go and and, and oftentimes uh, something that we do as singers you go Piting. because we want to swell into a note because everything is alive notes are alive everything you hear is alive when we do things like piting, we're teasing the 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 life into the notes rather than just piting, which is beautiful and it's on, on its own but it doesn't it doesn't enhance the experience it's just singing notes on a page this song i just I just love it. I, I love it so much. And it just makes me happy to listen to it. It makes me feel, it makes me feel good. You know, it makes me feel peace. So much of game music at times it has to fit a narrative or fit what's happening on screen or a boss battle or whatever. And obviously we get a lot of that in here. There's something so beautiful. Yeah, it's just nice. It's just a great tune. It makes me feel good. And... It's one of those tunes, like I said, you could play it in the car when you're feeling some sort of way, whether you're happy or sad. I think like this song, this piece always brings me personally back to middle. And every time I hear it, it's like listening, it's like a familiar friend. And I really love how that feels. I'm going to do a whole near series because I think that's being requested and I think it's really fun. And there's so many good pieces, so many good pieces in near, in the near world. And um, thank you. And we'll talk soon. See ya.